Welcome to the Super Facts Show on the Super Facts Network. Featuring St. Laz, who also hosts the popular web series Gem Pop and music journalist Mark Walter Ward. They have discussions about hip hop, culture, society, philosophy, and everything else. Now available on YouTube and wherever else you get your podcasts. What up, world? It's your boy, Mark Walter Ward, Super Facts Show, Super Facts Network. We got a, uh, well, a man I originally met as a producer, but I've come to find out as an artist as well. Just released the album Dysphoria, Hollywood Cobain. How you doing, brother? I'm, I'm doing pretty good today, man. Free, so, you know, definitely a good day. Yeah, that's that's always a blessing. So, you know, Dysphoria, that 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 word, I, I actually knew it because, uh, I mean, well, this is esoteric as shit, but when I was little, we didn't have no cable TV during the day. There hardly ever be able shit to watch on television. I read a lot. So like uh, in books like uh, The Killer Mockingbird, I think they use that word. And uh, like Huckleberry Finn, Mark Twain. But I don't think I've ever heard anybody use that word out loud before. That's why I just had to ask you to pronounce it. So for anyone who's unfamiliar, dysphoria is a state of unease or generalized dissatisfaction with life. Um. So what motivated you to release a... Uh, 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 because I mean that the album is definitely minus one song consistent with the theme. What 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 motivated you to uh you know release an album like that? Yeah, I mean, okay, I mean this goes back. This, it's just kind of where my music comes from. You know, what I'm saying my music comes from a place of pain, and I, I just I embraced it in this album because I've had producers and other people in the past tell me like you know you got to get your music out of that dark side. You got to get out of it and. But that's really that's really who Why? that's really what my music is what, for. What, what, what was their reasoning? I think because commercial music and, and, and if you're looking in those aspects was like the club stuff, especially like you know in the last ten years, it, that's the kind of music that was getting placed on the radio. And, and living in Texas, like when I was going through most of my phase, you know, that was the kind of music that was being played on radios and in the clubs. And so it was it was a way to like. You know, we got to get out of our situation. Um, Damn, bro. Like, they tripping. Like, ain't, ain't that about all Kid Cudi be rapping about? Matter the early Drake shit was like that. I mean, everybody always say 808s and Heartbreaks is Kanye West's best album. It, it's always like that until, you know, until it becomes the the thing, the trend. You know, because even like Autotune, you can, like, I'm sure that I still have music somewhere out there from like 10, 12 years ago where I was doing the rap in Autotune. This was like right after... T-Pain really started, you know, doing the, the auto-tune. And I started just rapping it. And I would have, like, kind of like how Future does it. Right. But people used to say, like, you know, you, you use auto-tune way too much. Like, you probably shouldn't. And then, like, three, four years later, they start, you know, making songs using that much auto-tune. This is just finally learning to embrace who I am and who I feel I, like I am as an artist, you know? And, and honestly, like, I my music... It is is my coping mechanism, you know what I'm saying? Like it's always been like that um, since I was young, you know. And even uh, you know, going through you know the military and and going to Iraq, dealing with my PTSD, it's just been my way to cope. Like music has always been that way. And so this album was just embracing that, embracing that dark side, and just being able to feel, you know. Like I got to listen to it the other day, yesterday. I got to listen to it in full, and. Uh, you know, even myself listening to the whole CD finally, like I really, like it hit me at the end of the, the CD, like at the end of the, the album, you know, like I really felt everything. Cause everything that I say in there, it, it's all, it's, there's nothing fabricated, you know, it's all authentic. It came from something I dealt with or something I'm dealing with. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it, it's just, um, It's one of those things I always said that I wish that I, I never, like, I would be satisfied with never being able to make another song again if I could just have that, if I could just get to that happiness, if I could just have that life where it's just smooth sailing, but it just hasn't been like that. And, you know, I turned it into music. I mean, that's that, that's one way to look at it, bro. And I don't know all of your situations or, or anything, but, you know, I've been to your crib, right? And, you know, when me and my wife got there, we, we, we wish we had a house that nice. You know, I used to have a, a home studio. It was nothing like what you got behind you. And I done had like riffraff up in that motherfucker, you know? So, 
I mean, point being said, everything's a matter of perspective. You know, and I, me, and I, I, I ain't trying to talk you down like you ungrateful. That 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 shit. Oh no, no, no. Out, that that shit probably came out sounding wrong. What I meant by that is like I look at you and see and see your lifestyle as being aspirational. So, yeah. so 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 like what some days when you're unhappy, just be aware that there's people who like me who look up to you. Yeah, you know, and, and that's the thing, like, and, and that's funny you said that because I actually had have been thinking about this myself, uh, especially reflecting in the last 24 hours or 48 hours, to be honest. Like, you know, it's kind of a big misconception that, you know, that money will make the problems, make money will make your life better. Oh, yeah, and, it, it won't. And, and it and it does in a way. I'm not gonna lie. Like it does in a way because I mean, I'm I mean, not... it, only bill wise though. Like it just takes yeah, away like, that 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 I'm worried about my bills or uh, you yeah. know if, if something happened and two paychecks we fucked. You know it take that level of life yeah. out away. But but you know one. I think there's like a stat and I think it goes up with inflation. But it's something like it used in, to be seventy five thousand. I think it's one hundred twenty five thousand now. Like if you if you earn that a year, there's not a significant difference of quality of life between you and somebody who's a millionaire. You know, I, I never forget, you know, 12, like 12, 13 years ago, or, you know, where I was couch surfing and, you know, me and my kids would spend weekends that I had them in hotels because I didn't have a, like, I didn't want them to go like in the hood where I was living. Damn, you know what I'm saying? Like, and uh, we'd go to hotels and they, you know, they made the best of it. And it was like the greatest time. Like we bonded so close, but, you know, they, they never understood, like they didn't know that we were going through hard times as much as we were, you know? Right, that looked like fun to them. I, yeah, you know, they, they were hanging, you know, the thing that they, they, yeah. they carry the luggage, you know, I would push them in the little luggage carrier thing. Like, you know, they had a good time. They love hotels, like jumping on the beds and watching TV and going to different cities because it didn't matter where we went. We just grabbed a hotel in the city and, you know, had a good time. But, um, so I never forget that struggle, you know what I'm saying? But money didn't make everything go away because, Stress is stress, man. And it don't matter if your bills are paid because the stress of life, like things and situations will will make that happen, you know? And happiness is something that you're always, you always got to work to achieve. It's not, it's not something that you get to and it's just, it's, you got it, you know? It's not like reaching that end of that rainbow and you're like, oh, like it's kind of like chasing after a rainbow because you always constantly going to, you know, you try chasing the end of it, you're never going to reach it. Well, well, it's like working out. Like, you know, I, I used to be like 360 pounds, right? When, when I went to prison, uh, I think I weighed 340. Um, I'm, I'm like 165 now. When I came home, I was 170. And then, you know, I thought I was good and I just ate, ate however. And, and soon enough, I was like right back to 220. So the point is, it's just like happiness. Like you always have to be working on it. It's yeah. not like you get happy and I can just sit back and stay motherfucking happy. But to your point earlier about the auto tune, bro, I can so relate to that shit. Cause I, I remember I, I copped an iceberg shirt, a Simpsons jump, just because I liked it. I had never heard heard of it or nothing. And and, oh, yeah. it, and it was like it was like $120, which was I mean, we you know, we, we was some crack. I was copping Versace shirts. But uh <laughs> I mean that, that that's neither here nor there. But I remember everybody was like making fun of me in, in my neighborhood. Like, what the fuck is that? And then when they found out how much it cost, you paid that much for a Bart Simpson shirt. But it said yeah, iceberg. started rocking it, yeah. Well, well, it said iceberg across the bottom, like a lot, because you know a lot of them wouldn't say iceberg on them. This one actually said iceberg on it. So then, uh, I believe it was volume one, or it might have been volume two. But Jay Z had a line where he was like, "Iceberg sweats what I'd be on the elastics." And I swear to God, within a week, the the main motherfucker making fun of me about that shit was like, "Hey, where you get that iceberg shit from?" Yeah, you know. What I, mean? I remember that that was the uh, like they had the the Looney Tunes too, right? Oh, they had mad people. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I had this Marvin Lamar. I see it. So I see it. It came back. You, I, I see iceberg videos all the time. I remember I, I had this mean Marvin the Martian sweater, but but they they did more characters than that. I don't, I don't remember it like that now though. But Disney Looney Tunes, and I remember like Lot Twenty Nine got like the rights to a lot of those a lot of those jumps. So, yeah. so, so they started making like like fake iceberg looking jumps. Jewels was the model <laughs> and shit. Shit, one of them would probably be uh probably be worth some money. So um. Let's talk about the, the the album. Like I said, it definitely goes with the um title, but um, you know, a lot of people, and this, this seems like such a cliche question, but uh, in in, in this case, like 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 you, you were extremely open and and, and and vulnerable, and I'm curious, like when you were speaking to the younger about the younger you, like like when when you were not was in Iraq or or when you was in a, or when you was couch surfing with your kids, could you have made music this this open and vulnerable? Because like. 
I'll tell you what, like a 22 year old me couldn't have made no songs like that. I, I mean, I, 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 I could have, but I wouldn't yeah. want nobody to hear them, you know? I, I was always kind of open, an open book like that, because again, when I was, when I write the music, it comes from a place of confessionals, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, I, I, I really consider myself a Christian rapper. Like, yeah, I curse and yeah, I say some things that's probably not so Christian in the music, but a lot of my music is, is just me talking to God. Like, it's, it's, it's my prayer, you know what I'm saying? It's my, it's, it's my cry, my prayer to, to God, like, to listen to what I'm going through. That's, you know, that, that's what I write. Like, the shit is real pain, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not, like I said, it's not fabricated. When I listened to, when, when I listened to the whole project the other day or yesterday, like, it really took me, and I, I'm the one who made it. Like, I've already heard every song because I wrote them. Um, like I say, it, it takes a lot out of me to, to make these songs, to put this album out. It takes a lot out of me. Um, but I just felt like it's something I have to I have to let people hear because I know other people are going through the same thing. And for me, it hurts to listen to the music. But in a way, it's also therapeutic. I feel better at the end of the day because it lets me feel what I'm feeling. And then I'm able to, to kind of get through my emotions and my feelings. And, you know, like, in, in a way, it's like some personal evergreen content, because if you ever get too, too outrageously in the other direction, you, you have that there forever to remind you that, you know, like you said, you always got to keep working on being happy instead of just settling for it. So um, so, some of the songs, um, it, was the, it, it, was, it was the first one. Hold on, let me call it up so I got it right. Okay, so, so strong, I, I, I got the title mixed up, I was, was going to ask. Uh, strong strong is, is that you playing the guitar in there no no I, I the the whole project was actually produced by jammy beats okay. except for the very last track it's one that i produced and it's just something i was feeling and that's why it's a little bit different sounding than the rest of the project because it wasn't produced by him but uh it's just something i had to get off you know what i'm saying that i just i created and um it was really a one take scene through the whole thing other than I left some scratch vocals because I had, you know, I had recorded one version of it um, just to kind of get it out. And then I, I just used some of the scratch vocals in some parts. But for the main, the last take, I went all the way through from the beginning to the end and just, you know, just went with my emotions on it. Uh, well, I mean, he did his thing with... Uh... He he did his thing with with, with, with that guitar and and yeah. like you said that, that that was an emotional ass song. And if you don't want to answer this, you know that's that's cool, whatever. But uh, like that's that's such a poignant song. Have you ever talked to your daughter about it? I mean, my my kids, we're like you know we're very close, we're really open, and they've been there through the whole struggle. Like you know, me and my me and my kids' mom. Uh, we didn't been through a lot, you know what I'm saying? We have a great relationship, you know, now we have a great friendship where, you know, we live in two different states, but we still are there for our kids, you know? And that's what's up. The, the custody has always been kind of weird, you know what I'm saying? Like we, we share the physically, we share the between states a lot. Um, so we've grown in a, in a lot of senses, but early on things weren't that way, you know what I'm saying? And the kids were fully aware of everything because, you know, the questions they got, they, as they got older, they questioned like, hey, why can't we spend more time with daddy? Why can't we stay, stay the night with daddy? Like, you know, and that's what kind of motivated how the changes are to where now, like we, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, like, you know, my kid's mom has grown a lot. I've grown a lot. In fact, thank God she had my back the last, you know, when I was just locked up this week, you know, because of her, I was able to, you know, she helped me get out, you know, and uh, took care of your appointments and everything. Shout yeah. Out, shout out to her. Strong woman. So so I'm not like I'm not worried that my kids are going to think any way of me or her uh, because it's all in the past. But it's the story. It's the true story, you know, and they know um, they know like how things were and they know how things are now. So that's all that matters, you know, but. Oh, I feel it you, bro. Good. I tell my kids all the truth. We don't got we don't got no fucking cut cards. They gonna find that shit out anyway. I remember uh my, my pops used to do apparently used to do some of the things he criticized me for. And then when I found that shit out later, I just looked at him like a motherfucking hypocrite. Like, why you ain't come at me like, bro? I've been down this road. That ain't good. As opposed to like some moral superiority shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I mean, kids will get more mad about 
you lying about something than you just being honest, you know? And I know there's like, as they grow, there's certain things that they, they shouldn't know and, and, and you can tell them later, but to, to straight up lie, I've never been, you know, someone to do that. And then, you know, then the next couple songs, I, I'm curious, like, you got a lot of guilt inside you about your past relationships, huh? And, you know, I, before you answer, I, I ain't a front, I do too. And, and I'm, maybe not romantic relationships, somewhat a little bit, but definitely uh, strong relationships. And I was, I was wondering if you got any advice on how to get past that guilt uh, other than making albums like Dysphoria. I mean, part of it is just, I mean, yeah, it's a lot of guilt. It's a lot of guilt because when you love hard, you think of everything that you could have done better. And memory of curse, ain't it, bro? Like, I wish I yeah. didn't remember things so fucking good. And even though you know, like, everything wasn't, you know, 100% your fault, right? You start looking back and you're like, okay, she did this, but I didn't have to do that. And right. just, it just kept snowballing. Like, you know, it, it was the point in the fingers, it's the game. It's just, you go back and you're like, man, was it really worth all the, what it turned, like, how it ended, you know? The, 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 the what ifs, um, you know, it's just, uh, and also sometimes it's just feeling the manipulation too. Like feeling manipulated, you feel that guilt sometimes because you're blamed for everything, you know? And, and when you've been blamed enough times, you start to look at yourself and like, is it really me? You know? And personally, I know in, in relationships, I've given my all. I've done, I've gone above and beyond because I'm like a server, man. Like when I'm in a relationship, I feel like I'm there to serve you. And it, whether you want to serve me or not, I'm still going to love the way that I know how to love. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's a good fine. way to put it though. Cause like a good server anticipates needs and that's, that would definitely be a, a characteristic of a good partner. But sometimes, you know, people want that and then they don't want it. You know right. what I'm saying? And, and, and it's just, uh, you know. it's, a, it's a fine line, bro. Every, everything in life is about balance, and, and some things are hard, a harder balance than others. I mean, I know, I, shit, a, who the fuck am I telling you? You're the one co-parenting in two states. <laughs> that must be a hell of a balance. You know, a lot, of, a lot of issues in relationships, too, is because out of fear. You know what I'm saying? With, with um, fear, fear of losing the person, fear that you're not good enough? All the above, you know what I'm saying? Because even, like, in a sense, when somebody really knows you, or you, 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 you're vulnerable enough to tell them, you know, some of the stuff that's happened in the past and, and, and you kind of tell each other, you open up to each other. Sometimes they use that against you. They use that to hurt you and they use it to repeat it because they know how much it hurts you the first time. And uh, that'll really fuck you up, you know what I'm saying? Because you also already have that fear from it. It already happened before. So when they threaten that, it kind of puts you in a position of fear like, you know, how to, you know, how last time I handled it the wrong way, this time I'm gonna get ahead of it and try to handle it better. But you end up fucking shit up in the process even worse. You know what I'm saying? Word. It's and, like doubling uh, down on a bad bet. Yeah. And then once, you know, once, once that trust is gone between the two of you and, and, and you're sitting there like worried about like what they're, you know, what they're doing, it, it's just, it's over. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's, it's just a, a me versus you thing. Because you're you're sitting there fighting for yourself at that point, and uh, that's kind of it's kind of like what you know in song number three, or you know song number three and four kind of about. Well, I I want to talk to you about number four because to me that got a strong rock influence, and, I, and bro, like I I, I could see you. you. You ever thought about making a rock project? I mean, if I, I had no disrespect to anybody, but you already sound better than Rebirth. It, you know, if I had. A producer that could that could generate that sound you know that's kind of what um you know because i'm a producer myself like you know like you said but i produce for other people i never really produce for myself because it's just it's one of those things man you don't get high on your own supply you know what i'm saying so i like to to, to create the you know the, the production and i like to give them to other artists and let them see what my what i inspire out of them you know what i'm saying and, and seeing what it does when it comes to my my own music i have the, i need the same thing i need other production to inspire me to write this music you know because that's what it does the music inspires me i i can sit here and make a beat and then 
write the song and record it. And I've done that many times, but to get like my best music is made when somebody inspires me because I'm, I'm just, all I have to do is focus on writing the song, you know? So, I mean, yeah, that's definitely something I, 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 I love guitar. I've always loved guitar, even, you know, for 10 years, 10 years ago, when, when I was working on like my early production, I would bring in guitarists and we would, you know, I would bake the beat and then come in on the post production and add a guitar. And some of the music, it just, that's before like there was a lot of guitar music. There really wasn't guitar music. Um, now it's like a lot, you know, so now it's out, the guitar is in everywhere, but it wasn't out there like that before. I had live bass, I had live drums. It's just not having the funds to always pay to yeah, get that's, everything yeah, that's done, expensive. you know, cause yeah, cause I had to pay musicians to come and I had some that would work with me and I had some that were always down. Um, it just, it, it was a lot of work and I was young and you know, my situation was different and that's, you know, I've kind of over the years, I, you know, I had to take some time off to put my family first, you know, get in a situation where I'm in this house and stability is, 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 is good now. And that's why now I'm making this push, you know what I'm saying? Like this album right here is the first half of, of, a, of, of a bigger picture, you know what I'm saying? Because my next project, well, I'm not even gonna get into that, but this is, this is really the first of a two part project, you know, and it really shows two different sides, um, two different hands, which we all feel, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the, the highs and lows of life, you know? Got you. Did, did you mix it down? I did, yeah. All right, so good, that, that, that's perfect then, because when I first heard Drugs with uh, uh, Cassius, formerly of Shady Records, um, I thought maybe, I mean, his verse went with the song, but not quite, right? But then when I listened to it, because, you know, I listened to the album about five, six times. And the more I heard it, like, the more I realized that not only did it, it perfectly fit with the song. And I was, I was curious when you're engineering it, you must have been listening to it over and over. Did, did, did you start taking a little bit of deeper meaning from it when you, when you heard it repeatedly? Well, that one, okay, I'll be honest a little bit, is... I sent him the song, I sent him the open verse with the hook because at this point I was in Florida and he was out in California and I had just left California. So I sent it to him to put a verse on it. Um, he put a verse on that one and another track that's gonna be on the next project. So I sent it to him with the hook, but without my verses. And uh, so he kind of, it's kind of his interpretation of, of, of the hook, you know? Ah, uh, got you. And, and his perspective was more of like from a drug dealer's perspective, you know? Um, whereas mine, my first verse and my second verse, the first verse is kind of like, you know, it's, it's about addiction. And at first everything is great. And you're like, Oh, I'm good. Like, you know, I'm, I'm having a, the time of my life. Yeah. And then the second verse is more like when the good times turn into a nightmare and it becomes an addiction. Yeah. Like it does for everybody, you know? Yeah. Um, that's what the song is about. And once you're so just consumed by this pain, and consumed by the addiction like you're too deep in you know and so it, it's like a nightmare and that's what i wanted to reflect in the song and uh i, I kind of like when cash put his spin on it because it was a different perspective from what i already had put because i'd already put the highs and lows of, of the addiction and he put in the more street and, and the and the and the drug deal inside of it that i didn't even get into you know Right, which is part of why I felt it went with the song, but also like I kind of got the impression that they that the dealer was just as addicted as the user. Like that as, too, you know. You know, I mean? yeah. Now, um. See, man, my bad, bro. Like you, you sent me a jump that only had eight songs, and I'm looking at uh YouTube, and it's got twelve songs. So, so, so some of the th things I might I might not have uh, wrote down the title right is is make the stars align. Is that number six on the uh I, on the iTunes version? Let me see. Uh, Cause I just wrote the numbers, which I which I shouldn't have done. I should have wrote the names. Make the stars align is song number six. Yeah. The, the, does that does that situation end hopefully? Um, to me that song, it was a more upbeat song. It was about having like goals and ambition to 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 make those goals happen. You know. And, and just working my ass off to to make everything work out the way that I always wanted to work out. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, you know, you're struggling right now, but I just gotta grind right now. You know, um, I got I gotta work right now, and I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to get to where I'm trying to get. And, and that's that song is a little bit 
um, more on the more positive side, you know, but it's still in the struggle. And that's why I, I put on this project and not the next one. Got you. All right, and then that Michael Jackson song is definitely a bop. That hooks, that hooks sick. You know, I, I know. I guess we ain't supposed to talk about Michael Jackson. But shit, I got Michael Jackson Pepsi fan behind me. I still, I still fuck with the music. I, I, I ain't never been around Michael Jackson, no kid, so I have no idea what the fuck he did. But um, I'm, I'm curious, what's your favorite Michael Jackson album? Um, I know that's a hard one. Uh, I, I, I gotta go off the wall. I mean. I'm trying to think. Uh, I can't remember the name. I, I don't remember. Like, okay, obviously everybody knows Thriller. You know what I'm saying? That was that was just as a kid. The music video, like, I you know I was really young and, and watching that music video, it, it was a whole movie. You know, so there's always Thriller. There's another track. I can't I can't think of what it is. It's one of the deeper ones, and um, I wish I remember the name right now. And uh, but it, it was actually, it's really, it's a really deep track. I want to say. Man in the Mirror? No, but that's a good one too. But that's not what I'm, what it is. It was like, I think it was one of the tracks actually from the 90s. Uh, it was one of, one of his like later tracks. And. Uh, like Blood on the Dance Floor? I, I was in jail when that shit came out. I, I, I ain't never heard the album that had Biggie on it. No, I can't, I can't even remember what it, like right now. Like if I heard it, I would know it, but right now. Uh, I can't well, even. Well, do yourself a favor, bro. As big of a fan of, of music as you are, Quincy Jones said that he didn't start making his best music till he was 50. And, uh, and I mean, he might have changed his tune later, but uh, I've definitely seen interviews where he said Off the Wall was his finest work. Yeah. And, you know, it, can't, it came out like a year, only like a year before. Uh, I think got to be starting something that might be on it. I don't know off the top of my head, but uh, it, it, it's right around the thriller time. It came out just before it. Yeah. So I, I would definitely advise anybody who... Uh, who uh, ain't heard that to check it out. And, and, then, and then we'll finish with this because I ain't gonna ask you a question about every song. The, um, on one of the songs, and this is where I know my track, my, my track list is out of order. But uh, on one of the songs you um, was talking about living a fast life. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm curious as to uh, what, what makes you label your life as fast because, you know, I've, I've, I've done a podcast with you and I kicked it at your house. And, uh, you know, I know you... Li li live in the entertainment world which can be fast and boring but uh so i was just curious what what what, what led you to say that uh that, that was on a no more pain <clears throat> no more pain no more hurt and uh like i said man everything i do i do it at full speed um I, like i always i dwell in i give my all 100 percent like like there's no holding back and so that's put me in some situations, like even, you know, even when I was young and I was getting in trouble, like I was, you know what I'm saying? Like I was like, I wasn't taking things slow. Like I was out there just living crazy, you know? Um, when I, I was in Iraq for a year, I was there from 18. I had my 19th birthday out there, you know? Nice. And no, no, I'm sorry. I was out there at 19. I had my 20th birthday out there. And just everything in my life just came real quick. I had my son when I was, uh, you know, the day, the day before he was born, I had turned 18, you know? Damn, yeah. And so everything came quickly. Even working with, with Cash is like, I was only 20, 21 years old when we started working, you know, where I was engineering full projects. You know, I had no, no like major experience, just what I learned from like, some of my, my friends that were, you know, a little bit more advanced than me at the time. And, and just from working my ass like every day in the studio, just to try to perfect what I was doing, like try to learn the shit. Um, and it's put me in situations where it just feels like everything's coming at me so fast because once you start moving up in this industry, like you have people from all over the country, even sometimes all over the world that, that you're working with and, to keep up with the amount, you know, it's crazy, but you go, some days I'd be on the phone, I, it's just a, 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 a list of phone calls and I go from one phone call to the next phone call. To the, I know you know, because you have to keep your relationships with, with all the artists that you, that you, you know, work with and you talk to and you interview, you know what it's like, like it, it's a lot of artists and that's what you gotta do in this industry. And so you're always on the go, you're always, traveling like I spent half the year at my house and sometimes I'm you know half the year in Texas and you know between California and Texas and then sometimes here and there like I'm just everywhere 
and you have to you're always constantly on the go. You never really get much time to relax. Um, and so, you know, it's always been like when, when I was struggling to put my kids and get them in a stable home, you know, then when I, you know, for the custody, when we had custody issues, it was always one thing that led into the next, which, you know, has led me to where I'm at right now with my current situation, which is going to lead me to the next one, like the next struggle, like life just hasn't slowed down for me yet, you know? And, and I don't know if it ever will. Like I, I always say, like, I want, I can't wait to be like my grandma, man. My grandma, she could just chill at home and watch TV all day. Like, I don't want to watch TV. I don't like TV. But what I'm saying is to not have anything on my agenda. And I just, you know, I don't know if I'll ever get to there because I'm, I'm for one, I, I just, I'm a workaholic. So I'm constantly like, I want to be creating. It doesn't matter if I'm creating a beat, you know, writing a song or even doing video shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like nah, to do video I, shit. I, I can tell you got a, like a constant desire for self-improvement. So like, I don't, like you wanted them empty without a challenge kind of people. Even like, you know, even personally, like my body, like, you know, I, I've lost four, uh, I lost 45 pounds so far this year since March. Damn, that's what's now, up. Good job. I had, I had gained 10 pounds last month, but I lost it this month. So like, it, you know, it's, it's still a struggle, but it's something that I'm trying to maintain and I'm trying to use this moment to push me forward for the next 40 pounds that I'm trying to lose. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's just always something, I always feel there's always something that I can improve on, which kind of makes life feel like everything's coming at you so fast that I just don't know if I'll ever get that moment for life to slow down a little bit, you know? And I don't know if that's something that I just have to do myself. And I don't know when that moment will be, but uh, I don't see it coming anytime soon. I mean, it, it, it probably make itself known. Hey, hey bro, I, I, I lost my weight again with this ill-ass exercise program called uh, Anarchy. You, you had to buy the DVD, right? I've heard, I've heard of that, yeah. I, 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 I still got it on, on, on the JPEG I be taking from this computer to the one I edit the videos on. I send it to you. That, that shit is uh, three yeah. half, three yeah. half hour jumps a week and then one 15 minute one. And I swear to God, bro, I lost like, like, like 50 pounds and got cut up in, in like four months. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I mean, that's why all I've been doing is drinking water, you know, like. Well, well, well the, 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 this homeboy, he do some shit. Like when you do the weight jump, he do it at a, like because only one of them's weights, and you just use uh, fifteens or some shit, whatever, whatever you at. But uh, yeah. he 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 does it at a pace where like you build muscle, but 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 like you, you get your metabolism going, and he he's all like a scientist. He 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 wanted to head head Peloton pe trainers now, but uh. You know, he, oh yeah, yeah, everybody got them now, them pelotons. Yeah, this Andy Spears cat, but uh, he got it like tailored so your metabolism is still running an hour yeah. and a half afterwards. But I'll, I'll send you the Jones. It'll take a long ass time okay. to upload, so you might not get till tomorrow. But but let, let, let let's end on a couple of positive things. Um, just now you were speaking about so fast. Um, man, have you been have you been surprised that? Well, I mean, how can anybody not be? Except, I mean, well, I guess the talent's there, but how fast show off gang has took off. I mean, I mean, I mean, that shit's insane. I see people wearing show off gang shirts and all kinds of shit on, on social media, videos. It, it's not really surprising to me because, you know, okay, as an individual, when, when you're in this industry, you always try to look for people who have put in the amount of work and the amount of time in this industry as you. Because, you know, you can't carry everybody. You know what right. I'm saying? And, and, and Hayes probably has the most experience out of us. And the most, you know, he's deeper in it than a lot of us, you know what I'm saying? And he still has, to, he does have to carry a lot of the weight, but he doesn't have to fully carry everything himself, you know what I'm saying? Because each person on the team actually contributes at a high, at a high level, you know what I'm saying? We got produ producers, engineers, and artists, all who've had extensive careers in this industry building up the same way, you know what I'm saying? And that's why it's able for everybody to kind of, you know, because it's familiarity. And everybody's been doing little things as from over the last decade to build that familiarity, you know what I'm saying? And coming together and just, you know, everybody on the squad has has stuff underneath them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so it, like I said, it doesn't surprise me at all, man. And Hayes, man, Hayes always is always grinding, bro. Jay Hayes is always grinding. Oh yeah, he, he, he. ever since I met him, he's he's always been out there everywhere, man. He's always everywhere, you know, and that's what you gotta do. 
Bro, that night was the first time I met both of y'all, and uh, y- 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 y'all just been super fucking solid. You know, like 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 very rarely do I meet people in the music industry that have y'all level of integrity and character. I mean, Stoner too. I ain't trying to leave anybody you know, out. Yeah. Everybody I met that night wasn't didn't have that much character. But uh, speaking of, I gotta but, hit but, Stoner because he's he's actually in tech. Uh, I'm sorry, in Florida right now. I gotta hit him up because he he wanted to come through the studio. So I gotta hit him up actually. Uh, but yeah, he's out here in Florida right now. Oh yeah, you but, gonna uh, do that? You gonna do that this weekend? Probably I'm gonna hit him up after after we get off and and see uh, what his plans are. What's up, bro? Uh, if, I don't, if I don't got shit to do, can I, can I slide through? Come through, bro. Yeah, we'll set it up. We'll, after this, we'll we'll get together. Well, Let I, me hit up Stoner. I, I gotta talk to wifey though. I don't know what the weekend some plans are. You know, like, okay. like, like like we all answer to our bosses, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so uh, yeah, it you know Hayes. You know the one thing about him is he, like I said, he's always everywhere. And I I was at, like for a lot of years I was going to the the festivals and I was doing all that. And then I became more of like a hermit. Hayes kind of like brought me back where he's like, yo, come, you know, we're at the studio here. We're, we're, we're going to this thing. We're going to this boxing event or this MMA event. Like, you know, Hayes has brought me to those things to kind of, you know. Now you got, you got to do that shit, man. You, I, yeah. I, I don't like it either. Like when I, like, I, I ain't never learned to drive because, you know, I spent a lot of time in prison. I grew up poor. Like, like it was probably less than 10 people in my high school that had cars. But, and uh, so like when, when I lived in D.C., Man, I had my profile through the roof because I could catch a, the metro everywhere and, and go to everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then I moved to Houston and like it's shit's further away and my wife got to drive me everywhere. And I don't always want to be taking her to some of the places it should be at. And, yeah. uh, and, and, and then now I live in Tampa. There ain't no bus. There ain't no rap scene. You know, I mean, thank God for these Zoom podcasts. Or I wouldn't be doing shit. But yeah, <laughs> but, but yeah like uh, uh, availability is definitely the best ability. And then we're yeah. we going to end it on this. I see you got that Lakers hat. So I, 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 uh, you, I, I want to send a special a special shout out to the Lakers because I'm a uh, you probably can't see the Wizards Jones but uh, I'm a huge Wizards. I fan. see LeBron. I see LeBron right there. The oh, oh yeah. box. Yeah, and, and the Space Jam Jones. Yep, I see that. Yep. But but the, but the, uh, I I just want to thank y'all for taking that humongous fucking Russell Westbrook contract off our, <laughs> off, our, off off our hands and sending back some productive players. Shout out to y'all for that. Yeah, you know it hurts it to get rid of Kuz. Cause I really thought he was gonna develop into a, a, a like a, a superstar player, which I still think he will. But he was never gonna be that man on the Lakers, because like he might come back one day once the older players are gone. But he needs to develop into that player. He, he's got to have that position available. Like LeBron, eighty, you you can't grow so much underneath that. You know what I'm saying? You can't grow to be uh, that superstar. I, I mean, look at uh, what's his name? Um. Man, I can't believe I forgot his name. He used to play he was with the Lakers just a few years ago, but uh, he got traded in the part to the Pelicans. Not Lonzo Ball, but uh, Josh Hart. Um, nah, the, the other know. one, the really tall. Jo- 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 oh, Brandon Ingram. Yes, yes. I mean, you see how he is. Like that guy's a beast, but he wouldn't have been the beast on the Lakers because you just don't have that space available. Yeah, I mean, you know. Lebr- LeBron always got the ball in his hands. I, and, and then in, in Kuz's case, I, I, th- I think uh, he, he's probably not not an athlete suited for the, the, uh, at least. And I ain't trying to insult the man. I, I've been doing the same thing. But uh, he, he, he young in, in L.A. So, so, think, so yeah. sometimes, sometimes, you know, going, going to the gym for five hours ain't going to be a priority. Yeah. I mean, you can say whatever you want about the Kardashians and Jenners. Not 95% of dudes that talk shit about line will be – Falling, falling, falling out. Well, yeah. you, you already get what I'm getting at. They be pressed to day. I mean, I, I, I well, can, to- I can totally understand how cats who are who get a hundred million dollars before they 22 get distracted with fucking IG models and and, and famous women. I mean, and, and also the the pressure, like you know, like because his thing was he was so inconsistent. He'd be really good, and then his shot would just be off all like for a while. And to me, it's just not having enough time on the court and then when you start to do like when you start to miss your shots you have that pressure of like you only have this much time because you know they're gonna take you out and shit yeah you don't start making shots so you force a bad shot it's it's a bad he needs needs to he needs to be able to take those shots miss those shots and still have the time to make more shots after he's missed those shots and know that he's not going to be taken out of the game just because he misses a bunch of shots like he needs a team that's going to believe in him even when he's was struggling that's anybody man yeah, and, and and that's why, like, I think him going to DC, you'll see, like, he's gonna be, he's gonna be, a, he's gonna be pretty good. He'll Man. develop to the player he's he's supposed to. You know, I kind of like the Westbrook fit, even though a lot of, a lot of the basketball podcasters don't seem to. But you, you, 
the thing we talking about Kuz, his his defense got way better, and uh, I, I, I would pick the Lakers as the championship favorites, except. I feel like y'all, y'all, y'all done gave up a lot of your fucking defense with, with Kuz and KCP. I mean, those is basically your number number one and two perimeter defenders. Yeah, but I mean, we just picked up DeAndre Jordan the other day. We we got Carmelo. DeAndre Jordan. DeAndre Jordan, Carmelo Anthony ain't checking nobody on the motherfucking perimeter. <laughs> no, no, but it, but it just. I mean, you know, I mean, Ted Taylor, Horton Tucker's supposed to be taking that leap. You know what I mean? And uh, the players that they have though, it just. I don't see anybody that can that can beat us. I really don't. I mean, ah, nah, I don't think so. I mean, even with even with the uh, <laughs> if they all healthy, that'd be a hell of a yeah. series. Uh, what's his name's coming back? Um, the Marcus, one that used to be in the Marcus Aldridge. Marcus Aldridge, yeah. Um, so if he comes back, see how he plays, it, it should make it a little bit more even. But I still think you know, I still think Lakers have the edge when it comes to that because, like, I feel like. The experience that they have, they know how to play together. You well, know you got saying? you got rid of Caruso, right? You got you yeah. Got, so, if if y'all did play the Nets in the finals, it's just gonna be a huge motherfucking mismatch between Irvin and Harden on, on, on the perimeter. One of them's gonna have to be guarded by somebody. But on the other hand, it's gonna be a huge mismatch with Anthony Davis. So, it's just yeah. I mean, there's just so many so many assets on the team. It's just like, I, see, my thing is that I think. Because of the experience with the players and, and, and how long they've been playing, you know, they played in the Olympics together and all star games together. So, like, they're not gonna, it's not gonna take them a long time to really gel, you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like they're gonna gel pretty easily. And I think Melo gonna surprise people. I think Melo gonna do better, oh, yeah. better than he did in Portland because yeah. LeBron make everybody better. Like, I ain't trying yeah. to say shit about Dame Lillard, he's definitely a legitimate superstar, but he ain't somebody I think of as making everybody around him better. So no, like if, I mean, if you LeBron take Carmelo, is completely unselfish. LeBron right. is completely unselfish, man. So if you take Carmelo from last year, and you know if he be around LeBron, he gonna be working out way harder. So he gonna be in better yeah. shape, and he gonna have a, a the 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 team's number one player, is someone that makes you look better. And he ain't gonna probably have to play as much. And he probably, yeah. and you know, sometimes on Portland, he'd have to play the five sometimes at the end of the game. So so. And- even I, Westbrook, man, like look. Oh I Westbrook, understand. Westbrook gonna ball. Don't listen, man. Because- people say that shit don't know shit about basketball. I mean, I, and I think he's going to change his game the way he should have a long time ago. Like, okay, when he was in K- OKC, it was always him and Durant were having issues. And it's kind of like one of those things where they both came to the team young, so they kind of looked at each other like like peers because they were. But at the same time, Durant was the lead. You know what I'm saying? He was the Batman. Westbrook was the Robin. But he didn't see it that way because it was they were too close to the situation, man. It's like... It's like sometimes when homies get a little bit jealous of the other homie, that's when shit go wrong. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like Westbrook coming to L.A., you know, is a situation where he sees LeBron not as somebody as his equal, but as someone that's above him and he knows that he's got to play a role. And he's going to fit in that role a little bit better than he would anywhere else because he's like, okay, that's LeBron. I, I don't have to worry about my ego. That's LeBron. We know LeBron is the, is the, is the, the upper echelon. You know what I'm saying? And – to me, that's kind of like how show off game is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I'm I'm great at what I do, but mm-hmm. I respect I respect the people that are in show off game enough to to lower my ego to be like, yo, like play my you know play my role. I, you know, I tell Hayes all the time. I'm like, bro, like I don't, you know, he he's always coming up to me with opportunities, and I'm like, hey, bro, like look, whatever you need from me, you let me know. Whatever you see, I fit in. You let me know because I do the same thing with people around me. You know. Whenever I see a position that they can fill, or wherever I see an opportunity that will, that they'll, I know that they can handle, and they'll, they'll, you know, be great at it. I give it to them, you know, and that's how I feel like like Westbrook fitting in a situation with the Lakers is, is that he respects the people he works. You know, it's all about respect. I think, you know. Well, I mean, to keep the shove gang parallel, you know what they don't talk about Westbrook? They talk about like, uh, is he gonna take bad shots? Too many shots? I don't, I don't think it's gonna be none of that shit. I mean, he'll make a bad decision every now and then, but I mean, every, yeah. every aggressive person does. But but, but, but I think but, LeBron, with LeBron there to pick him up, man, you well, know, that that's confidence right there. Well, what well, I was going to say, like, taking it back to the Shaw gang comparison, what people ain't, ain't, ain't realizing is that uh, the Lakers were one of the slowest teams in the league last year, and Russell Westbrook is going to get him out in the transition like a motherfucker. Oh, like, yeah. like, like, he brings another yeah. aspect, and, that, and, and, that's, <laughs> and, and that's what Shaw yeah. gang has, you know, because, like, Stone, like Stoner, for instance, he's kind of like the Russell Westbrook. 
because there really ain't no one like Stoner. No, you, you know what I mean. It's it's totally unique, and in the wrong situation, it, it could go it could go left. But you but you yeah. put you put like like an instrument, you put them in the right symphony, and you got something beautiful. Yeah, no man, that, that's that's a perfect uh, what is it called it uh, analogy. The, yeah, the analogy, man. Uh, I try shit, shit, bro. I, I, I like, like I said, I, I, I used to try to rap before, uh, well, shit, before this side taker finally gave me this fucking stuttering problem. But uh, when, when I went to jail, I had long, long, I had two long braids. I never had my hair cut. Man, they, they, they fuck, they fucking chopped them shits because there's one of them shits for the lice. Motherfucker just cut them jumps with a scissor. You man, bro, they were so heavy you could hear a thud when they hit the floor. And uh, I came out that bitch with a receding hairline. But but since then. You know, I've uh, I've I've, I've ghost written. I mean, y'all y'all can find my name on ASCAP if you want to. Yeah, but I, I've definitely ghost written a few things. Yeah, I, man. I, you know, I I had long hair too, bro. Uh, in, in my cover actually in the the dysphoria cover, I have my long hair still in the picture. Um, because I had taken that picture. I had there's a, there's picture a cover with you on it. I just seen one with like the rose and the letters. Yeah, I'm I'm behind that rose, looking sideways. Ah, uh, see, I only seen like the little Joan on the. You know how I be on the phone. Yeah, yeah. I, I, ain't, I ain't seen the big picture. Yeah, I had I had long bleached hair. My shit was like down here, like Hollywood Hogan. You know. That, that's and, what's, uh, <laughs> that's, I can't imagine that. That's what's up. <laughs> that's what's up. shit. Well, you start rocking the shit out that shit though. Yeah, but I just I chopped it all off, man. I chopped it all off, and I was like, I'm gonna start fresh. You know, just to. Sometimes change up your, your hair or whatever, man. It's just you get a different feeling, refresh. Word. You know what I'm saying? Word, well, let, let, let's end it right here. I, I want to ask about that cover, My, minus you in the background. Uh, I, I thought that if, if I had released that project, that that cover was tattoo worthy. Did, did you? It, you had any thoughts about getting a dysphoria tattoo? Actually, yeah. Like I plan on putting that rose right here, right here. Um, I got my kid's name on each side, so I wanted that rose to go like right here in the middle. And kind of just connect through all the the like the the vines and the and the thorns to connect all like, like into a bigger picture and get it you know get more done. But I actually yeah that's that's exactly why I did it. And the reason why the 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 rose looks like that it's like stained glass. Yeah. Is because I feel like you know we're we're a little bit more fragile than we think we are. You know what I'm saying like you have to take care of your emotions and, and your feelings because if you don't. Just like stained glass, man, you, you it can break so easily, you know. Um, and so that's why I chose that's why I chose that in the in the artwork, you know. Man, that's a that's a perfect ending right there. That that was super fucking profound, man. I, I, I appreciate your time, brother. I, I enjoyed the album, you know. I appreciate um, you, man. Thank you. Oh no doubt, and and you know I, I I'll keep supporting. Always hit me up whenever you got some, and we'll definitely stay in touch. Already, bro. And I'll let you know, you know about you know this weekend. Uh, yeah, that's a bet. And, you know, I, I hope everything works out for you, man. I'm pulling for you, brother. Thank you, man. All right, brother. Take a light. Salute. One.